Gospel of Matthew, chapter number one, beginning with the 18th verse. And it is entitled in my Bible, Joseph Accepts Jesus as His Son. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to, to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had a mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him uh -huh. and took Mary home as his wife. Yes. But he did not consummate their marriage uh -huh. until she gave birth to a son. Yeah. And he gave him the name Jesus. Yes. 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 Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come now as humbly as we know how. Thanking you for just being God and God alone. Thank you. We thank you for redeeming us from a burning hell. We ask you, Lord, to give us the mindset to be of your kingdom. Give us the mindset to be living lives that draw people to your kingdom. Yes. And right now, Lord, we ask you to speak a word to us. We ask you to remove me so that your people hear you and see you. We ask you to forgive us of our sins yes. and fall afresh on us right now in this place. We ask you to bless every church that is worshiping right now. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you. And we thank you for your love towards us. In everything that we do, we do it for your kingdom. We do it in your power. And we do it for your glory. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 And amen. You may be seated. Yes. Verse number 19 for emphasis. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had a mind to divorce her quietly. I want to talk to you for a few moments on today from the subject, Unexpected Crossroads. Yeah. Uh, unexpected Crossroads. All of us have been living our lives doing what we feel we are called to do and have come across some unexpected crossroads. But isn't it good to know that we are blessed in the midst of our unexpected crossroads because of the obedience of Joseph. Yeah. Isn't it good to know that we can have joy yeah. when we experience unexpected crossroads because of the obedience of Joseph? 
we can have hope no matter what comes our way because of the obedience of Joseph. Isn't it good to know that we can find peace in the midst of the storm because of the obedience of Joseph? Through the obedience of Joseph, we have Jesus. Jesus has come to abide with us. The Bible says that he is Emmanuel, which means he is God with us. Isn't it good to know that no matter what comes our way in life, that we have God with us? If we are sick, Sister Sue, we have God with us. If we have misfortune, God is with us. If we have debilitating diseases, God is with us. Isn't it good to know today that no matter what you go through in life, that God is with you? He has promised never to leave you nor forsake us, but God is with us. We're all going to face yes. some unexpected crossroads. Yes. But I thank God that he sent Jesus to be God with us. Amen. But do we realize do we realize that Joseph is the unsung hero yes. of the Christmas story? He even says that there are no songs about Joseph. I don't remember seeing any Christmas shows about Joseph. I really don't hear too much about Joseph, but the Bible said that Joseph was a good man. He was a good man and he was deeply in love with Mary. <laughs> he was deeply in love with Mary. But Mary got pregnant by all the visit to see Elizabeth. Luke tells us that she was there about three months. And she came home and said, I am pregnant. What the fellas at? What you talking about, Willis? Well, I fell in that. That is an unexpected crossroad. She goes away for three months. Comes back and says, Guess what? I'm pregnant. That is an unexpected crossroad. But see, when you look at this text, Joseph and Mary were engaged, which in their culture was just like them being married. Amen. Once a couple entered into the engagement, that was it. And because she had turned up pregnant, there's some consequences for that pregnancy. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is why Joseph wanted to put her away quietly. Yeah. This, my brothers and my sisters, is an unexpected crossroads. Yes, Have you ever had an unexpected crossroads in your life? Yeah. Amen. Yes, Lord. But see, Joseph. Even in the midst of the circumstance, he loved Mary. And he did not want to disgrace her publicly. Don't you know when you love somebody, you shouldn't try to embarrass them in public? All right, all right. I don't care what folks say, you don't embarrass your loved ones in public. Amen. Right. Amen. But he did not want her to experience shame. Uh -huh. So what he had decided to do in his flesh was to end the engagement quietly uh -huh. because he had experienced an unexpected crossroads. Joseph was thinking how could this have happened? We knew how it could have happened. <laughs> 
But he said, even though it looks bad, I am not going to do any harm to her. And so like any good man should do, he pondered his decision before making a decision. Sometimes you gotta think things through, church. All right. Too many times we just jump into doing something. We need to pray and we need to think things through. So Joseph began to think things through. And the angel came. And he said, Don't be afraid to make Mary your wife. For the child that is with her was conceived through the Holy Spirit. Where my fellas at? Uh All right. God would have to come to us Uh and let us know that it is of the Holy Spirit for us to be comfortable. So he made Joseph comfortable with what was going on. When God is moving, there's not going to be any confusion. When God is moving, there's not going to be any frustration. When God is moving, there's going to be peace. When God is moving, there's going to be joy. Hallelujah. He said, don't be afraid. Yes. Come on. What's going on? It's from the Holy Spirit. Uh, and she will have a son. Yes. And you will name him Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. Yes. Yes. My brothers and my sisters, we need to stop walking in fear. Yeah. And start walking in faith. Yeah. When we fear not, we don't look at our circumstances. Yeah. We look at our God in the midst of the circumstances. Yeah. When we fear not, we don't look at the situation the way things look around us. We look to God. Hallelujah. When we fear not, we focus on our faith and not on the fear. When we fear not, we build and trust. We practice in trust and we obey in trust. Do I got some folks out there that are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do I got some folks who are going to build the trust, practice in trust, and obey in trust? Fear not. That was all Joseph needed to hear. Uh He could have walked away. But he stood on the promise. Amen. He could have embarrassed her, but he stood on the promise. Yeah. He could have given up hope, yeah. but he stood on the promise. He stood by Mary while he stood on the promise yes, of God. Yeah. The songwriter says, I'm standing on the promises uh-huh. that cannot fail. Yeah. When the house storm of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God, I shall prevail yeah. because I'm standing yeah. on the promises of God. Do yeah. I got some folks out there that are standing on the promises of God? No matter what it looks like, I'm standing on the promises of God. No matter what they say about you, I am standing on the promises of God. I'm standing. Joseph, he stood by the promise. And just like God chose Mary, Uh he surely chose Joseph too. You see, I understand. When God chooses you, Come on. When God chooses you, when He chooses you to be a minister, when He chooses you to be a deacon or a deaconess, when He chooses you to be a missionary, an usher, whatever you want to be in the church, there is a sacrifice you have to make. So too many times we, we, we want we want heaven without a sacrifice. But we have to deny ourselves. Take up our cross 
Yeah. And we have to follow him daily. Yeah. And that leads us right into our, our discipleship definition. If we deny ourselves, we take up our cross. We follow him. He says, follow me. Yeah. And I will make you princes of men. Yeah. But there's going to be a sacrifice for the call. Yeah. There's going to be a sacrifice for the anointing. Yeah. There's going to be a sacrifice for your service. But I'm standing on the promises of God. Yeah. The angel says, fear not. And don't be afraid. Yeah. That's a word for somebody today. Yeah. Amen. You're going through something. God is saying, fear not. Yeah. And don't be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what the doctor said. Yeah. Fear not. Uh-huh. Don't be afraid. I don't care what your bank account looks like. Fear not. Don't be afraid. I know there's some trouble in your home, but fear not. Don't be afraid because you're standing for the promises of God. I can go to my seat right now because when you get an unexpected crossroads, all they got to do is stand. And when you stand, they're able to withstand whatever the enemy throws away. I'm standing for the promises of God. Do I have five folks that stand here? Three, three. Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. I'm standing. Fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid anymore. Because your God is bigger than your problem. Fear not. Because He came to be God with us. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Stand on the promises of God. The angel says, Fear not, Joseph, son of David. Yes. Uh-huh. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Yes. Because the baby <laughs> that is in her, uh-huh. the baby uh-huh. that is in her, yeah. he's going to change water to wine. Yeah. The baby that is in her yeah. will make the blind see. Yeah. The baby that is in her will raise the dead. The baby that is in her, they will hug him out. Yeah. The baby that is in her, they will stretch him out. The baby that is in her, he will hang his head. The baby that is in her will die for the sin of the world. That baby that is in her will rise victoriously on the third day for all power in his hand. Yeah. I'm standing on the promise. Yeah. 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 Fear not. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. You, son of David, yeah. name him. Jesus. Name him Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sin. See, Jesus simply means Yahweh saved. And Yahweh means I am that I am. So the great I am, that leads you back to the Old Testament. The great I am. He saves. God will redeem his people from their sins. The Bible says, therefore God also has highly exalted him. And he has given him a name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Understand? No matter what you're going through, 
Jesus is here to help. Jesus is here to deliver. Yes. Jesus is here to sanctify his people. And he is here to be our help. Yeah. All you gotta do is stand on the promises. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, yeah. Let me let me go to the parenthetical. The promises could be standing next to you. <laughs> but you gotta stand on to activate it. That means you gotta do something yeah. to activate it. Yeah. All you gotta do is stand. Yeah. Somebody said, change your position. Change the position of your heart yeah. and stand on the promises of God. Yeah. 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 Don't be afraid. That's a testimony for somebody this week. Yeah. Fear not. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Yeah. So, what can we expect? What can we expect to receive from God by faith when we encounter an unexpected crossroad? When an unexpected crossroad comes, number one, know God embraces us. Isn't it good to know? When trouble comes your way, yes. that God is your refuge yes. and your strength. Yes. A very present help in the times of trouble. Yeah. Is it good to know that God embraces you no matter what's going on in your life? No matter what folks think about you or say about you, God does not change his position in your life. When God embraces his people, he holds us close. Because we are now a part of his family. He is our Father who art in heaven. And He holds us close. But see, He includes us. I explain this to my class. See, it's God that does the work. He's just there when He does it. That's why I can't nobody get a big head in the church. Because see, it's God that does the work. We are just standing there when He does it. Jesus comes in the midst of our situation. To put his loving arms around us. But see, he's not going to force you to stand on his promises. We have to recognize who he is. See, the story is told about a young girl. Her father was the principal of her elementary school. And she was Clowning in class. The teacher said, Do this. She did that. The teacher said, Go. She came. The teacher said, Right. She said, Left. She said, I am going to discipline you if you don't do what I tell you to do. But the little girl, knowing that her father was the person, she said, Do you know? Who my daddy is? I'm not telling you to cut up, but sometimes, church, we need to recognize who our daddy truly is. Yeah. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. Do we recognize who our daddy is? We can fear not because we know who our daddy is. Oh. When we have an enemy that comes against us, we have to know. Who he is. When you have problems in your life, we need to know who he is. Sometimes you're gonna encounter ruthless people. You got to know who your daddy is. We are going to face difficult situations as a church, individually and collectively. We have to know who our daddy is. And our father in heaven, he embraces us in every way, shape, or form. So number one, we have to understand that God will embrace us. Number two, God surrounds us. Isn't it good to know? 
that no matter what, God surrounds us. See, in the Old Testament, it promises over and over that God is present with his people. See, the tabernacle and the temple served as symbols of his divine presence. Are y'all with me? Yeah. The term tabernacle is derived from the term shekhar. That means to dwell, to rest, and to abide. Isn't it good to know that God dwells with us? Yeah. He rests with us. Yeah. And he abides with us. Yeah. But see, Shekhan, from Shekhan, we get the word Shekhina. Which means the presence of God's glory. Yeah. Yeah. The child, I'm going to Mary with this, the child that is born to Mary and Joseph will be the Shekhina. Yeah. Jesus is the true tabernacle of God. Yeah. He is God with us. Right. See, see, as long as you have the Shekhina glory, See, we have Jesus because he is the presence yes. of God's glory. And as long as we have the Shekinah, everything will be all right. Yes. What am I saying? As long as you got the presence of Jesus, yes. you don't have to worry about your health. Yes. As long as you got the presence of Jesus, you don't have to worry about your safety because God surrounds us. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And I know because his presence surrounds us that everything will be all right. We'll endure transition. Everything will be all right. In time of our despair, everything will be all right. When friends have failed me, everything will be all right. When I feel discouraged, everything all right. Everything will be all right because I have the presence of Jesus in my life. So number one, when we, when the unexpected comes, God will embrace us. When the unexpected comes, God will surround us. But last but not least, when the unexpected comes, God has promised never to leave us. The story is told to me. The Western, they were having a biblical discussion. One man asked the other man, he said, which biblical character would you like to be? The other man was kind of perplexed. He said, they're Moses. But I don't want to be like Moses. Deacon Woods, he said, there's Abraham. All right. He said, but I don't want to be like Abraham. Mm -hmm. He said, well, there's David. He said, I don't want to be like David. He pondered for a minute. Deacon said, he said, I don't want to be I want to be like love. So wait a minute. Moses is in the Bible. Abraham, he's in the Bible. David, he's in the Bible. But I don't see love anyway. He said, Jesus simply says, Lord, I am with you always. I don't know about you, but I want to be like love. I want Jesus to be with me everywhere that I go, every day of my life. It is good to know that Jesus is our Savior. Isn't it good to know that Jesus is always with us? Isn't it good to know that He will never leave us nor forsake us? Isn't it good to know that Jesus will love us in spite of all? of our circumstances. Yes. Isn't it good to know that Jesus will guide us yes. through all the dark places? 
It'll be good to know that Jesus will always adore us. And he will never leave us alone. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Mary's baby. He's God with us. The one true deliverer. He's God with us. He's my shield in the time of danger. He's God with us. He's our foundation. He's God with us. He's our soul and our shield. He's God with us. The Bible says he's my strong power. He's God with us. He's my redeemer. He's God with us. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's God with us. He's my leader. He's my savior. He's my Lord. He's God with us. There's going to be struggle, but he's God with us. Sometimes there's going to be doubts, but he's God with us. Jesus, he will surround us. Jesus, he will embrace us. Jesus will never leave us alone. The songwriter said, I've heard. I've, I've heard the thunder. I've seen the lightning. But God has promised He won't leave us. Or forsake us. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone in the midst of struggle. I'm not alone in the midst of adversity. I'm not alone when I'm grieving. I'm not alone. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Somebody said. Oh Lord. Somebody said. Yeah. Because it's not long. Somebody tells us the story. And I had a coworker who didn't quite understand. The somebody says, Hark, the herald. Angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. He said, Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the trump of the skies with the angelic host proclaim Hallelujah. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark uh -huh. the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. But let me throw this in. See, my co worker, he wouldn't sing the song. Because he said, I don't know. Who Harold is. <laughs> it's almost loud, but it's a sign that I'm not going to move until I know what I'm moving for. But see, I told him, I said, a Harold is an official messenger that brings news. So I need to know that do I got some Harolds in the house on today? Do I got some Harolds? That's going to stand on the promises. Do I got some arrows that's going to explain the good news? Do I have some arrows that are going to say, For Christ I live? Do I have some arrows that say, For Christ I die? Do I have some arrows that are going to go me? But no man, no woman has gone before. Do you want to be an arrow on today? Hallelujah. We have to tell a story. But tough times are going to come yeah. when we tell the story. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. We're going to be perplexed. We're going to be confused. But see, as long as Jesus is in the equation, yeah. as long as Jesus is in the equation, everything 
is going to be all right. Don't worry. Because Jesus is in the equation. Don't get anxious. Because Jesus is in the equation. How do you know, Pastor? Because the Bible says, name of Jesus. Uh-huh. He came to save his people. Yeah. Yeah. He is Emmanuel, yeah. which means he is God yeah. with us. And I know that if God is with us, Sister Sue, he's going to embrace us. Oh, yeah. He's going to surround us. Yeah. And he's never going to leave yes. us. Do I got some heralds in the house yeah. that are going to tell somebody, yeah. anybody, about Jesus? Do I got some folks who are going to live out the Great Commission? They're going to go you there for and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, teaching them to a Lord. Do I got some folks that are going to be like Lord on today? And he said, Lord, I will meet you always. Always with me. Trust him on today. Trust him on today. Are you going to trust him? Are you going to lay your burdens at the feet of the master? He's come to be God with us. He came to deliver. He came to set free. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Tell somebody about Jesus. Be his parent. Tell them about his life, his death, and his resurrection. Unexpected crossroads. Amen. God will embrace us. He will surround us. And He will never leave us. Amen. No, never alone. Uh-huh. No, never alone. Yes, yes. He promised Amen. never to leave me. Uh-huh. Never to leave me alone. Yes. Let's give God some praise on today. You can come as a candidate for baptism by letter or on your Christian experience. And if you need to know more about Jesus, we'll teach you about Jesus. Is there one on today? He'll never leave you nor forsake you.